back to the Look Fantastic YouTube channel and welcome back to Beauty Talk. Today's special guest is Miranda Kerr who is a former Victoria's Secret Angel and now founder of skincare brand Cora Organics. Thank you so much for coming on our YouTube channel, we're so excited to have you here. Thank you, thanks so much for having me on. I just wanted to say happy birthday for yesterday, did you get up to anything nice? Oh, it was so lovely. I started my birthday doing um, a little Pilates and then I had a facial and then I had a lovely picnic in my backyard with my boys. My, I have three oh. boys and my husband arranged this cute little picnic and we were decorating cupcakes and my three boys just loved it. Oh, that sounds like a really lovely day. Yeah. So do you want to tell us a little bit about when your career started and how you got to where you are today? So I grew up in a little country town in Australia and um, it's, yeah, it's a very small little town and I was, you know, pretty much a tomboy growing up and then <clears throat> when I was 13, a friend of mine entered myself and herself into a modelling competition and I won that competition and it was kind of unexpected but it was really fun and it kind of opened the door to the modeling world although I continued to um, finish my you know education and finish grade 12 and then my first trip was to Japan and after that um, I traveled a little bit you know to Paris and lived in Milan and lived in um, like Barcelona for a little bit and then finally I moved to New York and I was modeling there in New York and um, and then I moved back to LA and then yeah I launched Cora uh, in 2009 in Australia while I was still modeling for Victoria's Secret and um, I continued to you know work with them and then um, I launched in America in 2017 into Sephora um, and now we're sold in over 30 countries so it's wow. been an interesting fun journey. So as you said you'd um, been entered into a competition for modelling, had you ever done any modelling before or was that the first time? Um, I'd done like a little thing here and there um, and it was you know it was the first kind of serious thing, I guess. And from there, I would, you know, model on the weekends or on school holidays. And I didn't really start modeling full time until after I graduated high school. Have you ever felt a need to change the way you look to fit in with stereotypical beauty standards while you were modeling? Um, you know, from the very beginning, my mum said to me, look, if you're going to do this, I don't want it to change who you are and I don't want you to ever think that you need to be anything different than what you are um, and so she kind of taught me from a young age that like if people like because when you're modeling you go to a whole bunch of castings and sometimes they're looking for someone with you know blue eyes and brown hair or maybe they might be looking for someone with blonde hair and brown eyes and so it's something that my mum taught me from a young age is to not take it personally when um, you don't get the job um, or you know don't feel like you have to be something that you're not you need to just yeah. my mum from a little girl has always said just let your light shine and if people don't like it my mom has this saying, she's like, if they don't like it, they can lump it. Like, I never would have imagined that I would have such a long career that I have in modeling. I always saw it as like, just, you know, that might be my last job. Like, well, you know, you won this modeling competition. Great. That might be the end of it. Or now you've got another job and you're working with this Japanese client and that's amazing. So enjoy that. And like, but that might be the end of it. And so I never really saw it as like an actual career. That's why I really saved my money so that I could, 
invest it into my own company. When you were younger, did you ever expect to have a career in modeling? Was that what you wanted to do or did you have other career ideas? When I was younger, I wanted to be a marine biologist at one point. I was like, okay, well, just because you love dolphins doesn't mean you need to be a marine biologist. And then I was also very interested in nutrition and health and wellness and psychology and the way that the mind and body are connected. Is that what made you want to start your own skincare line then? No, um, when my, I was 16, my mum got sick with cancer and she had cancer in her spleen. And so we looked at our general like health and we went through our whole household and um, read all of the labels on the back of everything from the prepackaged foods that we might have had in the pantry. We read all the labels. We had this little book called The Chemical Maze and this book was a guide and it would show you, you know, the different numbers and what they meant or, um, and then what the purpose was. And it was really interesting. Um, and we went through everything, as I said, from everything in our pantry to household cleaning products, to hair care, to skin care, to washing detergents, you know, everything we looked at um, very specifically and thought, you know, and we were very shocked to notice that there were a lot of um, chemicals that were hidden in all of these mainstream products and in large doses they could be detrimental to your health and we just assumed that um, because something was sold on the shelf then it was safe and then we read into it a little bit more and noticed that you know this certain ingredient in high doses could potentially be carcinogenic and so we really did a clean out of everything and when we did that <clears throat> we weren't really able to find and then we kind of went deeper into not just you know paraben free and sulfate free but like actually certified organics and the studies that have shown that there are up to 60% more antioxidants in a certified organic ingredient. And <clears throat> that's a study by Cambridge, but back then there were, there's been so many different studies that have been done. What would you say are the biggest industry changes since you started in the beauty industry? Well, 10 years ago, um, no one was really talking about clean or organic beauty. And now people are really wanting that so much more. And there's a lot more education in general uh, around skincare, which I think is amazing. And yeah. consumers are becoming more educated on the ingredients that they're using and understanding that what they put on their skin really sinks in. And I think that clean beauty is a step in the right direction, but unfortunately, like clean beauty isn't regulated. Um, so I think there's more work that needs to be done. Um, and there is some greenwashing out there, like a product might be marketed as natural or organic. Um, and then they, you know, if they're not actually certified, then they could be potentially only using one organic ingredient. Okay, so I'm sure we're all dying to know what is your favourite beauty product that's not skincare related? Um, not skincare related beauty product. I would say probably... It's not really a beauty product, but I see it as a beauty product and that's the celery juice, which I'm drinking <laughs> every morning. I have 32 ounces of celery, as you can see. Wow. Here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, that was actually one of my other questions that I wanted to ask. Do you have any non-product related tips? I guess that would be your celery water. Is that right? I would just say that like health is wealth and if we take care of ourselves, then our skin is better and there's such a big connection between the gut health and the mind health and um i really just i love celery because it's anti-inflammatory you know it's alkalizing it's full of electrolytes and it has just helped me so much with my digestion and um just feeling really good and so i think that when you really um, take care of your body on the inside, then it shows on the outside, it shows in your skin. Yeah. Have you made any skincare mistakes that you can warn people against now? Um, laser was really bad for my skin. Um, I don't even know why I did it, but I tried a Fraxel laser many years ago. And ever since I've been kind of 
trying to re heal my skin um, from that and fighting the pigmentation that that laser caused my skin. So it didn't work for me. I know it helps for some people, but yeah, it didn't didn't help for me at all. Um, so yeah. Do you have any modeling advice that you would give to any young girls that want to start a career in modeling? Well, I think that it's important to um, understand that it can be a short-lived job and having that perspective, I think maybe even potentially gave me the longevity that I had. So um, the value of kind of education and having something to fall back on, I think is really important. Yeah. Um, and that's why I made sure that I finished my high school education. And then even when I was modeling, I was studying um, nutrition. I studied at Integrative Nutrition and based out of New York. And, you know, I'm a certified health coach. And I recently just finished another study, which Coursera was doing through Stanford on, you know, health and wellness. And I just feel like for me, like continuing my education is something that I'm very passionate about. And so obviously if you're modeling, like that's great, but understand that <clears throat> it's something that could be potentially not there tomorrow. So just make yeah. sure that you're passionate about other things and you are um, feeling that as well as, you know, the modeling. So whilst you were a Victoria's Secret Angel, did you ever suffer with your mental health? Not while I was a Victoria's Secret Angel, but I had, um, I experienced some bad depression after Orlando and I separated. And so that was something that I really just had to, you know, focus back on taking care of myself. And I was, I'm generally quite a happy person, but when Orlando and I separated and obviously we had a young child, Flynn, it was, it was a lot for me, even though I knew it was the right decision, it was a lot for me, like mentally, emotionally, you know, spiritually, it just was very different when you think that you are going to be with someone forever. And then that, that changes, um, even though, you know, it's for the best, it really it left me feeling very unbalanced and I was, um, quite depressed. And so I had to build myself up again through you know, taking care of myself, um, focusing on, you know, eating well, meditation, exercise, um, you know, really just being around people that help bring out the best in you and appreciate you for who you are and um, being conscious of your self-talk and making sure that you are kind and gentle with yourself, I think is something that's really important. So. Like the whole Victoria's Secret experience for me was a very positive one and um, something that I'm so grateful for. You know, I was able to travel the world, meet interesting people, and um, I had I had a lot of fun doing it. I worked, you know, we worked long hours and I was also working on many other different modeling jobs um, in between. So it was a very busy time in my life, but it was something that I'm really grateful for. If you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, my younger self, I would just say like, enjoy every day. And I think that life is so fragile and can, you know, and can be taken just like that. And I think that it's really important to, um, continue to do what you're passionate about and so kind of follow your own passions don't feel like you have to do what someone else wants you to do or be something that someone else wants you to be like you are you and I think that it's continually important to focus on cultivating yourself and you know take time for yourself to do things that bring you peace and joy and balance and um you know, appreciate what you bring to the table. And um, last question, what is the best piece of advice you have ever been given? Um, my husband just taught me that it's 
you know, you don't need to be afraid to ask for help from others. And I think that that's a really great piece of advice because I used to shy away from asking people for help. And then my husband just encouraged me to reach out. And I think that's something that um, has helped me a lot in my life. And I also think that another great piece of advice is from my mother and it's if you're going to do something do it right or don't do it at all I thought it would be a really fun idea if we could go through your previous red carpet looks and rate them oh <laughs> that one was a fun one you know what i love the combination of the pink with the red uh for me if i'm really wanting to like give some great energy I wear red like I have red on my fingernails right now um and the red lip just brought that kind of energy and I loved just that pink and red I think it's just amazing and yeah I, I remember that dress it was a good dress and that was a fun time and uh those shoes were I think were a good match with that dress because it made it all about the dress oh that was fun too that was a beautiful dress, very old school Hollywood, which was fun. And I love like the way that it sits and the way it's like almost like a mermaid tail at the bottom. That was also, that was one of my favorites too. You're picking my favorites here. Oh yeah, another Hollywood glam moment. And this was fun. I mean, not my most favorite color now looking back. Um, but it was still beautiful. Like you have the slit, you know, you have quite that deep V. And um, also I think the earring detail there was something I really liked. They were like beautiful different colors from memory. Oh, this was a fun one. You know, it's, it's kind of similar, but different. Um, my hair was back there. That was, I mean, the, the choker. That was me, I think when I was trying to be a little more cool but I don't know if it worked, if it translated fully. <laughs> that was also fun We're at the Met. And um, that was a little mini Louis Vuitton dress, which was cool. And then I had like super long hair extensions. I'm trying to think of what that theme was, but it was pretty cool. Oh, this one was beautiful. See, I love the color and very timeless, I think. This was like your classic, classic, beautiful, like old school, chic. That's an Oscar de la Renta dress. And um, that was really fun. I felt like, you know, little princess in that dress. Oh, I remember this one. I was um, still breastfeeding Flynn at this point. And um, that's why you can tell my boobs are quite big. <laughs> And it was very heavy and um, it was something that you just put on and you just felt like amazing because it just it just was like all razzle dazzle like it was just the dress itself like spoke you didn't I didn't really need to do much else I'm pretty sure it was Dolce this is an Alex Perry dress and Alex Perry is an Australian designer and I grew up wearing Alex Perry incredible to have this dress because this was when I first announced I was pregnant, no, oh, maybe I was pregnant with Miles. They were like back-to-back -back pregnancies, so it's hard. Um, yeah, I think I was pregnant with mm, one of them. Oh, this is a good one too. You're picking all my favorites. This was a uh, really fun, also a fun earring on this dress, which I kind of loved the earring and it made the dress in my opinion. It's been a while since I've been in a red carpet outfit. Thank you so much for coming on Bead to Talk Miranda. It was lovely to speak to you today. It was so lovely to speak with you. Thank you, Meg, and thanks for having me. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in our next one. Bye.